Before now, Matt Hamilton was a premiere on May 3, 2023. A Ripple official caused a stir when he revealed the company's intentions to develop a dedicated XRP ledger designed for digital currencies issued by central banks. Hamilton gave his perspective on the cryptocurrency industry. He is now improving a private version of the XRP ledger for state-backed digital currencies known as the UR. Although the remarks made by Ripple's head of developer relations were significant, questions surfaced about whether the value of XRP on this code over ledger corresponds with public perceptions or if it's something entirely different. Not the same black swan investors aren't an adventure investor even shared pictures of XRP's startling $327.00 pricing on this mysterious network, claiming to have seen this hidden ledger. Igniting the usual flurry of gossip. If you're new here, don't forget to ring the bell and subscribe to receive the most recent updates on our XRP topics. If you like my stuff, please show me some love by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment with your thoughts. This information sparked a flurry of debates concerning the true cost of XRP on this private version and even the reality of the ledger itself. However, this is where the story becomes more complicated. We recently heard a podcast clip that mentioned the Republic of Palau. What does that mean? It's important to remember Ripple and the Republic of Palia's prior collaboration, particularly when they led the world's first stable coin trial based on the XRP ledger, theoretically. These parties should be aware of the XRP price on this enigmatic ledger and the specifics of its existence and we solve this puzzle in today's show. Get ready to watch a video that features the finance minister of the Republic of Pala. Get ready for some serious dives. Deep into the dispute about private versus public ledgers, the basis of their stablecoin, and the potential worth of XRP. In any case, let's get straight to the video. We chose the public RP ledger mainly because of its openness. Transparency in sharing our ongoing projects and milestones has always been a priority for Paramount. The journey has been enjoyable thus far, despite some difficulties. To overcome these obstacles, Ripple's innovative effort, trial, and error throughout his assistance have been crucial. As the video finishes, this is seen in the Republic of Pal's financial situation. The ministry clearly gave the public priority. Ledger for its transparency, but their claim does not establish or refute the presence of a private ledger, leaving the door open for future developments. A lot of people are interested in knowing the reported value of this secret ledger. An audio clip that we obtained from another podcast will now play. This will clarify that the XRP speculative pricing on this covert platform is well like there is a theory that says the public and private ledgers may converge. If this is accurate, their prices may be combined. Calculating an average, but without concrete evidence, this is still hypothetical. Let's start by talking about the estimated pricing on the XRP private ledger, which, while not fixed, gives an idea of the possible valuation that the private ledger might assign to XRP. David Short, most known to many as Ripple's CTO, was present throughout these discussions. I will reiterate what I have mentioned previously due to its extreme complexity. A private ledger exists. It's not just a random item. I saw this happen for myself on a live YouTube video from Japan, and from that five-minute broadcast, I also learned that there is a public ledger. The task now how do they differentiate between XRP notes? Both public and private ledgers, the complexity of this work is immense, but let's not lose sight of my main point in the midst of all of this information. I genuinely see a day when the lines between the public and private ledgers will merge. But before that day arrives, we need strong, unambiguous regulations to ensure there won't be any confusion when they eventually work. Simultaneously, it appears that they are still in the trial stage of this. The private ledger is currently adding a substantial the Bank of Japan is recognized as SBI, which adds a twist to this story. Recently announced their plan to enter the XRP loan space. This is a significant development as it clearly indicates that large financial players are interested in XRP. The bank's goal of utilizing XRP for institutional transactions is emphasized by this new lending facility, and it begs the point, if Japan didn't think cryptocurrencies would play a significant role, why would they get involved in XRP lending? The viewpoint I'm moving towards will eventually become really persuasive. 
Considering that the Bank of Japan made a calculated strategic decision after completing several tests and determining institutional and individual appetites for XRP now that they're lending it, it's not simply the act of lending is calculated. A banking ploy to profit from the growing cryptocurrency trend, XRP's appeal extends beyond its speculation value. It's a potential tool for large-scale cross-border retail consumer transactions, and we're seeing a significant paradigm shift in business-to-business -business transactions. This isn't a one-time trend. Financial institutions use XRP to power functional utility projects by utilizing its capabilities for easy intra- and cross-institutional transfers and cross-border payments. Limited to Japan, global banking giants are coming together, for instance. The official alliance between MasterCard and Ripple not only is MasterCard a credit card firm, with this cooperation, Ripple is more than simply a payment processing behemoth, it's a broad network of subsidiary businesses. The collaboration between MasterCard's main division and its numerous subsidiaries, such as Yagdareth, Fluency Consensus, and countless more not even included here, highlights liquidity and potential scale in addition to sponsorship. There's a big there is some truth to the rumors that MasterCard and Ripple work towards the single strategic goal of using Ripple as the main payment processor. From the beginning, let's be this is just a supposition, and I'm trying to bring you all the news, rumors, and bits and pieces of information that are going about. I want everyone to keep in mind that my theory about why MasterCard might have partnered with XRP is just that, a theory. Yes, they worked with Ripple. And it's a known fact that the XRP cryptocurrency and its ledger are what power RippleNet's architecture that allows for on-demand liquidity. Therefore, if MasterCard uses Ripples, they're essentially using XRP. Having stated that MasterCard would automatically use the XRP ledger if it decided to support Ripple payments. Though theoretical, this insight highlights the seriousness of such a collaboration and its possible ramifications. Please keep in mind that I am not a licensed financial advisor and that the information in these movies is only meant for your amusement. I always advise viewers that before making any financial decisions, they should do their own research and speak with experts. I appreciate you watching, and if you liked the video, please click the like button. Also, don't forget to enable the alerts so you can be the first to know when I upload new content. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Be careful.